I know I am standing in between you and lunch, but we'll get through this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a smartphone, smartphones up! Woo! 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 If you've never been to a Hello the Future show, this song is called Drop It on the Twitters. It is what I use as my sound check. But since we are on the boat, I am changing it to Drop It on the Twitter. <laughs> Here we go. Drop it on the Twitters! Drop it on the Twitters! Drop it on the Twitters of yours! Hello the Future Live on a boat! What? On a boat? Drop it on the Twitters! Retweet! <laughs> <laughs> to you is, is there anyone in this room who cannot hear me? How would they know? <laughs> <laughs> so I play music on the internet like pretty much everyone else here. Um, my website is hello-the-future.net, which is a ridiculous title. I chose it two years ago because I thought hello the future would spell hell oh the anyway. So, but the easiest way to find me, honestly, is to type hello the future into Google or your favorite search engine, and I am, no, let me chop this off that So, I write about a lot of things, but I became mildly internet famous for writing a song about a dinosaur named T-Rex who's drawn by Ryan Harris. <laughs> dinosaur comics in the house, whoop, 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 good, 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 good. I don't have to explain what it is. This song is called T-Rex Has Feelings. T-Rex has feelings, though you may think he's a dinosaur. T-Rex has feelings, and he wants the world to listen to him as he says, listen to me. T-Rex was just standing there. Let's get in closer to see what he has to say. He's going to crush that house. Virgin PC Mommies gets in his way. Then Uteraptor stops by. Uteraptor says, hi, did that person die? And now T-Rex is all alone. T-Rex is all alone. T-Rex is all alone. What is T-Rex going to do? Because T-Rex has feelings, though he acts just like an animal. T-Rex has feelings, and he wants the world to listen to him as he says, listen to me. He likes to see the horse things instead. Like, what if he were made up of jillions of robots? Each of the robots had a robot head with the thoughts of the robots. Be T Rex's thoughts or the thoughts of the robots. These kind of thoughts help T Rex forget about his feelings. And also, of course, the robots who were thinking the thoughts of the ways he just want to stomp around and crush things until the reason bugs that she's pretty hot and that they should go check out second base and then get a corn dog. He hopes she likes corn dogs. Why wouldn't anyone not like corn dogs? Yes, T Rex has feelings, though sometimes they're confusing. T Rex has feelings, and he wants Dramesium Minus to know that he thinks she's kinda hot. T Rex was just standing there. Turns out that corn dog thing didn't work out so great. He asked Dramesium Minus, and she said she didn't think that they should date. So he asked you what to say, and how he could go on feeling that way when he had to see Dramesium Minus every day. And you tried to said, maybe if you hide away your feelings, you'll be able to get by. Maybe if you hide away your feelings, you'll be able to get by. And then T-Rex said, maybe if I hide away my feelings, I'll be able to get by. And that's why T-Rex has feelings, but just like us, he has to hide them. T-Rex has feelings, and he wants this girl to listen to him as he says, listen to me. T-Rex has feelings, though he acts just like a dinosaur, really he's got feelings. And he wants the world to listen to him as he says, listen to me. So that is what I did two years ago, almost two years ago, nearly two years ago. I started putting up a song on the internet every week. And I blatantly stole the idea from Mr. Jonathan Colton. And then I kicked his ass. <laughs> we're up to week 96, which I put up while you all were on the boat, so you can look at it when we go back. So week 97 will be next Tuesday. But for the first several weeks, I did a lot of songs about webcomics, because I was doing my Google search and my SEO and my long tail bullshit, and no one was doing songs about webcomics, so I thought that is what I would do. Anyways, I did the T-Rex song, and I also did a song about a webcomic called Questionable Content. Maybe you have heard it. <laughs> this song is called Questionable Contest Girl. Oh, I wish I were a questionable content girl. Cause then I would be pretty. 
At this point, we stop the show, and I find out how many of you have been to a Hello the Future <laughs> before. I know a couple of you have. Um, at this point, we stop the show, and you reassure me that I, I, I actually am pretty. I tried. I showered this morning. <laughs> so when we get to this part, you guys tell me I'm pretty. I wish I were a questionable content girl, because then I would be pretty. Oh. You are pretty. Yes! <laughs> now we build audience for porn, now we love each other. I wish I were a questionable content girl, because then I would be hanging out Mary Gold and Hanners as they play games in their rooms. Let me go and take a break at the Copy of Doom. Or they would draw a skull and crossbones floating in my cappuccino foam. And if I were a questionable content girl, I'd be home. Yes, I wish I were a questionable content girl, cause then I'd have a boyfriend. I'd have a lot of quirky little mishaps first. But then I'd have a boyfriend who would jam with me on bass guitar and then go fight the horde. I'd be the better player, but he'd have a bigger sword. He wouldn't waste his energy trying to make me something that I'm not. And if I were a questionable content girl, I'd be hard. I'd fit right in. I'm not that hard to draw. I don't take up much space. My story line would be how I would room a sit for the room buzz if they Martin and Doors place when they got home. I'd have them all so clean, even Hanners would be scared. <laughs> Make sure you draw me with bigger.
That's why they called it Nintendo. You could learn how to build cities. You could go and put some doom until your mom told you to go clean your room. And at school there was that one class called computers. And if you were good at that one class called computers, everyone would watch you as you started to play because it was time to go blow some buffalo. Awake. Yeah, Oregon Trail jokes never get old. I have found this. Because <laughs> once you take your family safely across the Oregon Trail, always you take your family safely across the Oregon Trail, except when you let them get dysentery so you can write their epitaph. And you write one that makes everyone laugh. Here lies Butts. He has a butt. <laughs> to college. And then what kind of a disappointment was college? You still had to show your freaking work and do assignments that had no purpose. But saving the princess had a purpose. Defeating GLaDOS had a purpose. It was continuous improvement of a measurable skill. And for most of us, it was a triumph. Tell me where else do you get to triumph? Unequivocally and exorably triumph. So you rush through your assignments with plus your dexterity and speed so you can get back to what your soul really needs. Alright, so this next reference is a little bit obscure. I will buy a drink for the person who can tell me what game I am referencing, and I'm actually serious, I'm not bullshitting you. <laughs> Cause once you save your little brother from ape-eating crocodiles, always you save your little brother from ape-eating crocodiles. Anyone? Tiger King? Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, and once you, <laughs> once you save the princess, you can't handle her being found, so you pay Bowser to make sure she's not around. <laughs> and by Bowser, I mean Nintendo Corporation. You actually pay your good money to Nintendo Corporation. And speaking of Nintendo Corporation, once you are invincible, you can't handle being invincible. How old were you when you learned the word invincible? You can't handle being invincible once you turned on the game genie. You can't unturn on the game genie once you've tasted programming power. There's no going back. Everybody's like, do 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 you guys rock so hard. <laughs> and now that we're grown up, well, we're still playing. Join the grown up world, but we're still playing. No matter what we do, we still come back to the game. And it's not because we think real life is lame. Because it isn't. Life is awesome! <laughs> You're on a cruise, what, what? <laughs> Does, um, I remember all those books where all those kids went into other worlds to do the things they do. As soon as they got home, they only wanted to come back as there was something there and that the rest of the world lacked. You can say it was the challenge or the test, but you and I both know it was the freaking ass quest. Make me drop the Campbell bomb. You know what I mean, cause you know we all were once kings and queens. Cause once a king or queen of Canary, always a king or queen. Once a king or queen of Canary, always a king or queen. That's how we took Final Fantasy from numbers 1 to 14. Cause life doesn't let you be a king or queen. I mean, life lets a few people be kings and queens. We got one on the boat. But mostly, I mean, life does not let you be a black mage. Although that would be ridiculously awesome. Or a dragoon. You're not be a dragoon. You could be a ninja if you practice really hard, but I'm not sure there's a lot of work for ninjas right now. You could be a thief. That would be easy, but I don't recommend it. Um, you could be a spoony bard. That is what I am. Hard. Day of Final Fantasy, you couldn't think of anything better for me to do. Do 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 do
the part of the show where I would hawk my CDs. Now I've been told by Mrs. Paul and Storm that I cannot sell them on the boat. So what I'm going to do is just have you look at them. Inside the CD cover, you'll see there is a CD on the inside. You'll know it's mine because it has my picture on it. Um, you can buy these CDs by, tell me how you can buy these CDs. How would you buy these CDs? On the internet. On the internet. On the internet. How would you get to them on the internet, sir? The Google. The, the Google. Sir. Tell me what you would put into the Google. Hello, the future. In my name, gentlemen, ladies. <laughs> All right, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take things a little bit slower now. Um, this song, as, as advertised on the whiteboard, this song is about Firefly. It is called River Song. I did not know that there was also a character on Doctor Who called River Song, but whatever. <laughs>
problem solved, which you can buy legally, not cheatingly, <laughs> in the store. <laughs> My man largely got the talent and he flaunts it, he drops back, hits everyone under the concept. The onset of his rapping is blunted, it's you up, and no man had the big copper's punk, you know the bend eaten up, always holler for more, thicker, even louder than the book before the previous encore. Just don't forget them off stage soon, but all business in the back with a hood is a strong yo. My man front is always managing his bubble legs and laying up his rippers on every day. You wanna hear up a game from 82? Good news, and from the left got songs for you, full of rhymes that he rocks, make him hot, make him rap with a five, think a duck, nerd, core, hip hop, pop, like on his head. Cause nobody went and started it grabbing your lungs, cause he knows how to market it. My man front is in the t shirt business, my boy Lars is in the t shirt business. Both of us were in the t shirt business, I thought that one was rappers. What is this front? A lot is in the t shirt business, and see Lars is in the t shirt business. Both of us were in the t shirt business, I thought that one was me as shirts. What is this? Shell and Chrono uh, slash Fick 
Would be a blank page. Um, and so I thought I'd fix that. This song is called Milk, which is a really stupid title. I wish I hadn't called this song that, but it's also the Portal 2 song. There are spoilers for Portal 2, but it's like going to hear or something. Milk, they don't have milk here anymore. They used to have it. We used to put it in our coffee. But I guess there aren't any more cows anymore. But this substitute is great. You can hardly taste it. I mean, you can hardly tell the difference. I know you don't understand what life was like. I mean, yes, it's like this, but not quite. What can I say that you wouldn't know? It was 400 years ago. <coughs> heard of cake, I can't explain it. It's made of milk and eggs and frosting and chocolate. And none of these words mean anything to you. But thank you for this coffee and this, I'm not sure what to call it. I guess I've got a lot to learn. But if there's one thing I've learned, it's how to get along in new situations. I know you don't understand. songs. It has a terrible cover, so as soon as we get off this cruise, I'm going to hold a contest to make a better one. Then I also did Hello the Future gets her Phil Con at Phil Con. That one has me on the inside. But also, you probably should be aware of this lovely thing. Who knows what this thing is? So this is called Mink Car Cover. Anyone here familiar with the band? They might be giants. <laughs> I've heard they're on this boat somewhere, but I've never seen them. Um, so they might be giants released this album called Mink Car on the morning of September 11, 2001. That was sad. Uh, Ten years later, a group of us, including including um, MC Farnalot, including Molly Lewis, including Mary and Paul, including the Double Clicks, including Ooh. myself, and a bunch of people whose names you will know. Storm is actually hidden on MC Farnalot track. That's cool. So we covered Mink Car to benefit the FDNY Foundation, which is the official foundation for the Fire Department of New York. We have so far raised about $6,000. We made them a donation earlier. We're going to make them another donation in a couple of months. 
So you can also find out about this by going to Hello the Future, or you can just type Mink Car Cover into the Googles, or if you come and see me, we can do some kind of charity thing. But I only think I got like two, two in my bag. I just wanted to show them to you. So, so I've done all of those albums. I've done a couple. I've uh, been part of a couple other things you can find me on the internet. But my next project for 2012 <coughs> is called Giant Robot Album. The cover is already done. Jade Gordon has finished it. Now all I have to do is come up with music. The title song <laughs> for Giant Robot um, Giant Robot Album is is actually called Giant Robot Song. Coincidentally, it is based on a true story. Back in summer camp, on the first day, they sat us in the picnic yard, and they told us the fine arts camp was very hard, and that all of us would have to practice very hard, and they told us if we wanted good work someday, we couldn't play our pop music or our anime, because those things were important in the real world. You know, the fine arts camp is all about the real world. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget, they took this one kid's drawing of a giant robot, and they told him to stop wasting his time, get in line, focus on perspective. And we practiced hard, and yet we met in secret to perform the final fantasy opera. We did they say we were wasting our time. <laughs> then, in undergrad, in our classes, they told us what was good and bad. It was good if it had meaning and was serious, and nothing good it produced that wasn't serious. And they told us every time we did a song or play, there should be some deeper meaning as a takeaway, so the audience would get up and go stop the war or decide that social justice was finally worth fighting for. And I'll never forget the way they denigrated anything reflecting pop culture. How they told us we were wasting our time. We should get in line and focus on perspective. But what they didn't seem to get was to make meaning first you have to go and make a connection. Otherwise you'll just be wasting your time. And I'm not even going to make the old argument about Mozart being part of pop culture. Or Dickens being part of pop culture. Or Shakespeare being part of pop culture. And how it all kind of changed with the frickin' Rite of Spring and the subsequent decision that art was a very, 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 very serious thing. And it wasn't for everyone. It was cultural broccoli. You know, I, I actually really like broccoli. Then in graduate school, when I said in class the internet had changed the rules, that the new artistic culture was the internet, and the people who did art should use the internet. With Web 2.0, I took the job the theater started all those years ago and gave us ways to make connections with an audience. There were so many ways for us to reach an audience. Never forget, they told me serious performers didn't use the internet. And they told me just stop wasting class time and get in line, focus on perspective. And my assignment for next class was to receive a restoration play in 1960. And I knew that I was wasting my time. I should have been making things from the start. We didn't have to stop drawing those giant robots. We should be using all our time to connect the lines and focus on creation. And turn on all of it will be hard. But what's important is that you make the connection. Otherwise, you'll just be wasting your time. So here's to the kid who got his giant robot drawing torn up on the first day of my life. got some sand in it. Oh. I think it's okay now. It turns on. It turns off again, but it always comes back on. This song is about our friend the Google and its its Google Plus thing. Y'all on the Google Plus, right? I'm not a huge fan of the Google Plus. This yeah. song is on that. And now we're old. And now, we have another way to meet. We put up circles for the people who aren't our real friends. <laughs> so we don't mess up and say something indiscreet. Like complain about our jobs to our employer. In front of our ex boyfriend. Oh, Google Plus, you are the best. Except you're another Goran thing to check. I got my email, G chat, Twitter, and Facebook, and YouTube comments. 
friends too. I've got five email addresses that are filling up my inbox. And now all these messages from you. You tell me I'm in a circle. Someone plus one means someone tag me in a photograph that's probably of me. The same way they tag me in Tumblr and Flickr and Facebook and Pasta Roots last year. So hear me. Why are we all recreating the internet on another part of the internet? I don't understand it. Oh, maybe this is my watershed. Maybe I'm so old, I must be dead. I don't understand what this whole book is about. <laughs> yes, I know about Facebook's privacy, but have you forgotten search history and how Google tracks it? Well, these are a few of my favorite things, and now Google knows it, and now Google bring to me all of these ads. My search is off kilter. We put together a repository of the world's knowledge, and Google Plus is bringing it to us under a Amusing all our friends with all our stuff. We've put up videos of cats or of guitars. <laughs> As if there weren't already quite enough. And yet somehow we all find this well appealing. Yes, Google Plus has given us that. <coughs> We're not Facebook feeling. Oh, Google Plus, you are the best. Except when you shut down our accounts for violating your tears. Oh, baby, for all you talk about, I can't even remember how this goes. Oh, poop is, um, da da tears, da 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 <laughs> blah, 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 okay, <coughs> all you talk about blah, blah, privacy turns out not to apply, cause you've got to sign up with a name on your birth certificate, or else Google Plus tells you bye-bye. They say they're doing it to protect you from trolls, but we all know that they want to keep the algorithm whole, and make sure they know what the name on your credit card likes. Sorry, I mean plus ones. So they can advertise it. But why is it so hard to let us post under our gamer tags? Oh, Google Plus, you are such a drag. I don't understand it. My name is Nicole, but my internet knows me as blue, so what can I do? I spent the past seven years building an online identity in such a way to minimize stalkers. I've had them through no fun and to maximize my professional and personal appearance in Google searches. Plus, y'all knows me in blue. That is my name for all intents and purposes. We'll just cut that space out and post, right? <laughs> now we're all Yes, of course, we're all on Facebook, too. And Tumblr, Twitter, Flickr, WordPress, YouTube, Skype, and I am just pushing our recursive content through. Until it's way too much for us to manage. We've already seen it all, and it's just content spam mode. Google Plus, you're just like all the rest. joke that won't work, that we don't have any internet. This is the part where I pretend to look at my phone and tell you that someone has plus one this song. And then I get excited because someone has plus one this song, but you couldn't have plus one this song because we're on a boat without the internet. Whatever! Google plus you are the best, I guess. Until whatever is coming next. I did that terrible song that I didn't really practice because I realized this a few days ago that I had an hour set instead of a half hour. I was like, gotta fill the time, what? Um, so this is on a half practice. So Mr. John Hodgman, isn't he awesome? So he, yeah, I know, he went on this thing called Song Fu, which is run by Ken Flume. You may have heard of it. And the first Song Fu assignment, yeah, I know, Song Fu. The first Song Fu assignment was to write a song. It's for Mr. John Hodgman. He gave us the assignment to write a song using the word bioluminescence. And lo, the Wikipedia page for bioluminescence increased in hits that day. <laughs> <laughs> this song is called Firefly. I love it a lot. You light up the neurons in my brain. You twist the rods and the cones in my mind's eye. Upside down, and I see your face where it shouldn't be. And I don't wear my heart. 
heart on my sleeve, but somehow I wonder if you see it through me. Every time I breathe, I hope that I don't hope you notice me. I have to be so gore and careful that I don't cup my pants and scare you away. At least not today. Because I don't know quite how to seduce you. And I don't know what I'd do with you if you stayed. And you might not want to stay. Sir God's blink as I write you a note. Do I hit send? Will you see through my code? And will you mind? I mean, I hope you won't think less of me. Fine lines that I won't cross, but it seems like you could read what I put in between them. You're just too bright to not notice my indecency. I have to be so gore and careful that I don't cup my hands and scare you away. At least not today. to seduce you and I don't know what I'd do with you if you stayed. And you might not want to stay. I know you're not a firefly, but, but baby, you've inspired bioluminescence with your presence. You're making my skin turn red. Uh -oh. And if you think it's untoward that you are the flame I'm flying towards, just say the word and I'll turn off my glow. I just wanted you to know. it on the internet, it's, it's really terrible. Also, I had a really bad haircut. <laughs> but four weeks in, I wrote this song called Monkeys and Robots. 
and it had four chords because I'd been in for four weeks and I'd learned one week for each chord. And it's called Monkeys and Robots and everyone liked it and so I'm going to play now. <laughs> Monkeys and robots and monkeys and robots. 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 Monkeys and robots and monkeys and science. Monkeys and robots and monkeys and science. Science and monkeys and robots and science. Monkeys and robots and monkeys and robots. Monkeys and robots and monkeys and magnet. Monkeys and robots and monkeys and magnet. Monkeys learn math while the robots learn science. Monkeys and robots and monkeys and robots. Monkeys and robots and monkeys and fractals. Robots and monkeys and robots and neutrons. Monkeys take pencils and make pieces of fractals. Robots build drums and play marbles with neutrons. One of the marbles hits one of the monkeys. He takes his pencil and punches the neutron. And then it explodes just like all of the fractals. And the monkeys and robots and monkeys and robots. Pieces of monkeys with pieces of robots. Pieces of monkeys and pieces of robots. That never still play. Nobody's watching. Not the pieces of monkeys or pieces of robots. Two, three, four. One little opposable thumb crawls by. It picks up one tiny robot eye. Robots and robots rebuild all the robots. Robots and robots rebuild all the monkeys. Isn't it nice that? Monkeys and robots and monkeys and robots. 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 fifth and a sixth chord that I threw in there for those of you paying attention to the music theory, but I threw those in later. It was really bad on week four. Um, so then week 44, now that I had carried this musical child to term, I wrote another song about a robot and about a tractor. It is called That Tractor. I took my tractor and I took my Roomba and I took my screwdriver and I went out to the back <laughs> with my boyfriend playing upstairs, playing Xbox. He won't miss the screwdriver. He won't know I'm not back. I tried though. I tried to
started to move and went for a ride And somehow I knew what it felt inside And it was more than I had ever dreamed of I thought I'd built a robot, but that tractor learned how to love <laughs> Yes, we took my tractor and we roamed my fields And then he said he loved me with the blinking of his eyes And we woke my family and we woke the neighbors And they saw that tractor back in surprise. They said, darling, you know you built a monster. What's worse, a sentient monster? A monster! But then that tractor said, I'm not a monster, and this girl is mine. We belong together. Yes, our hearts have gone through the combine. At least that's what I think he said. I may have been distracted by the way the people looked at me and the way the crowd reacted to my tractor. By the way, I'm looking for a lead guitarist. <laughs> Just think of all the stuff you did. 
live today. Wake up and put on your geeky clothes. Blow the snot out of your geeky nose. Practice punctuality and go responsible people go. Maybe you don't have to fight a slime, but you better get to work on time. Make sure that your output better shine. You are on your way. The other side is that whatever you want to do. You grab the roll and suddenly the work comes true. Wanna climb a mountain? Got to buy the shoes. All you have to do is just be brave enough to choose. So come along and sing with me. Life is a larp. You guys are like the best ever. Life is a larp. Your stats, you're already good as you can get. You can't be what you haven't been yet. Anything you want to do has a prerequisite you haven't met. Or you might think that you're not enough. Better roles come to people with better stuff. I'd say that it's time to level up. You won't look where you at. And every day, try on the stats you want to play. Grab the rule book, learn the rules, and start to play. You find that what you want isn't so far away. As long as you work at it consistently and with focus, watching for opportunities, learning about the other players, and connecting with the community. And don't forget to practice every day. So one more time, just sing with me. I know you know the words. Life is a lot Life is a